Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crap, it's crap, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. In my last video, I made two wooden hinge boxes. This is part two of that video, and in this part, I'll make two more boxes with two different types of wooden hinge. I already prepared the boxes in part one, so if you haven't seen that, you may want to watch that one first. I've gone ahead and I've glued the next box, and I've changed my mind how I'm going to go about this one. The lid was going to sit between these two high ends like that, but instead I'm going to chop those ends off. I'm going to glue a top in there and then I'm going to cut the lid off from the uh, main part of the box. When I started the project, I had an idea of the four different boxes. Nothing was set in stone and this one I was quite unsure about, but now I reckon I've got a plan. Now I'm fitting a piece of plywood for the top. It needs to be a good fit as I'm going to rely on the glue to hold it. Ideally, it should have been set into a groove and I would have done that if I'd have set out at the start with this design. There's no worries though, the plywood's stable and the glue will hold it just fine. I'll put some tape around the inside to catch any stray glue. The easiest way to split the top from the box would be on the table saw. The only problem with that is the saw curve would be around three millimeters, but using a hand saw, I'll be losing much less material and the box joints should still look fairly regular. Now onto the hinges and I prepared these two pieces of brush box off camera. The hinge will be made of two pieces that have finger joints, then a brass rod through them to hold them together. They only require regular finger joints, so I'm using a simple jig just to show that that's all you need. I left more than I needed on the side, so now I'll trim them down, and I reckon this way is much easier than trying to figure out how wide to make the pieces first. The hinges are really quite small, and here I'm marking where they'll be cut off.
I'm going to remove another finger from each hinge, making them symmetrical and more pleasing to look at. Next, I'll recess the hinges into the box. They could be attached directly to the back of the box as they are, but I reckon they'll look neater and less bulky if they're sunken in. I'm eyeballing the position and placing the hinge with the pin directly above the gap between the box and the top. I'm putting wax on the back and between the fingers so when I glue them in place any stray glue shouldn't glue the fingers together. I'm using acetone to clean the brass rod before they get glued in and also cleaning the surfaces of the hinge that get glued to the box. I'm using just a small dab of CA glue to glue the rod in and that only needs doing on the one end. The hinges work great, now I'll dress the plywood top and for that I'm going to add some Yosegi. If you're not sure what that is, I made a video in an earlier Scrapwood challenge showing how to make it. I'll put a link above if you'd like to check that out.
I sanded the edges several times making test fits until I was happy. I'm clamping that down pretty tight so that shows how strong that plywood top has bonded to the box. Before I apply the finish, I'll mask off the bottom of the box and inside the lid as I'm going to glue leather to that after the finish is dried. For the finish, I'm using the same hard wax oil as in the last video. It's a matte finish from Whittle Waxes. I put two coats of finish on and when it dried I cut the leather for the bottom and for the underside of the lid. I've tried gluing this leather before and I haven't found anything that will stick to it so I'll scrape it back first. I reckon that looks great and I probably should have done the same on all the other boxes. Now onto the final box and this has a really cool hinge. I already have the box pieces prepared, I just need to glue two pieces together for the lid. The hinge on this one is a Rob Cosman style hinge. Hopefully this video will inspire you to give them a try. If it does, be sure to check out Rob's videos as he goes into more detail than I will. The reason this hinge is so cool is it's hidden when the box is shut. So for that to work, the back, top and dowel for the hinge all need to be made from the same material. I'm using brush box and here I'm making the dowel. I'm sanding the last bit down to the final size. I think if I tried to do that with the dowel plate, it would probably snap being so long and thin. The dowel does need to be very precise though, so I check it with the calipers. 
Next, I need to cut a groove on the back and the top piece for the dowel to fit perfectly into. This is done on the router table and I did a test first to make sure it was set up properly. To make the groove, I'm using a quarter inch core box bit and cutting that on the outside of the back piece. The workpiece has a tendency to ride up as the cut's being made, so I make plenty of passes until the groove is even across the whole length. I only cut the groove in the back piece for now, I then glue the box together. When the glue's set, I can fit the lid to the box and then I can cut the groove into the lid. This is exactly the same setup as I used on the back piece. I didn't move anything. The only difference is the groove was cut on the back with it upright along the fence where this is lying down and the cut is made on the inside of the lid. The dowel needs to be cut into pieces so I run a line along it to help line it back up later on. This simple jig took less than five minutes to make. I did have to wait for the glue to dry and it allows the dowels to be cut fully supported at the back so there's no tear out. This is how Rob cuts his and it worked very well. The grain along the dowel will be matched back up so the thinner the saw cut here, the better the match. I have two sets of marks. I cut the first piece at the shorter mark and then cut the next on the longer one and I keep alternating the cuts until I have seven pieces. I also label each joint so I know exactly where they go when they need to be put back together. To join the dowels I'm using 1.6mm welding rod. I really should be using stainless steel but as I already have this I'll use it and I reckon it will be fine. This next step is really quite critical. I need to drill holes for the welding rod dead center of the dowels. Rob has a tool that he sells that makes this task super simple. I'd recommend checking those out and I'll put a link in the description. I don't have that tool so I'll use a different method on the drill press. I put the cutting end of the bit into the chuck, lower it into a vise and then secure it. And then I clamp the vise down to the table. Now we can put the dowel into the chuck and lower it into the fixed drill bit. The hole doesn't need drilling all the way through the dowel. It just needs to go in a few millimeters. I had the drill bit sticking out too far, it was flexing a little so I set it up again and lowered the bit down. Before I lowered the bit I had a couple wonder off the centre so I glued in a toothpick and re-drilled them. I didn't show it, but I carefully trimmed them with a chisel before I re-drilled them.
The last dowel was left long and now I can mark that and cut it for a tight fit. Now I'm marking the positions of the joints onto the back and onto the lid. Some sections will be glued and the others will be waxed, so I put a W where I need to put the wax. The waxed and glue sections alternate from lid to back piece and the wax is to stop any stray glue from going where it shouldn't. There's too much tear out to finish the camphor laurel with a hand plane, so I'll have to rely on sanding it again. I'm going to keep the hidden hinge box for myself, but I've decided to give one of the other three away to one of my Patreons, and I think I'll give them the choice of which one they want. The hinge looks great, but it's far from perfect. You can see glue lines in that dowel. I will give it another go another time and hopefully improve on it, but it's still pretty cool, and I really enjoyed making it. That was a really enjoyable project. I reckon they turned out great. Don't forget to check out Rob Cosman's videos and a big thanks to him for sharing his knowledge. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and it inspires you to give it a go yourself. And if you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.